So, uh, yeah, so come on by, 111 Corey Street. And uh, this Thursday is a chamber meeting um, at noon in A and B, and it's about social media, um, Facebook and Twitter and other social media. So um, if you're interested in coming, uh, you can go on our website and um, register. Uh, is that a reprise of the the one from no because that was about constant contact so oh. this is about about Facebook cool. primarily um, let's do go ahead we'll go ahead call the meeting door are you guys ready filming okay let's go ahead call the meeting to order do the roll call and then we'll just hold we can go on to the minutes we'll hold the award so the, this is the uh, September 15th meeting of the Yellow Springs Village Council Judy would you please call the roll Yes, Wintrow. Here. Askland? Yep. Housh. Here. McQueen? Here. Also present is uh, Village Manager Patty Bates, um, our wastewater and water treatment crew, and Jerry Sims should be here any moment. Also present at the rear is uh, Jason Handy. Okay. Uh, and if anybody has cell phones, please turn your cell phones off to silent thank you Lori <laughs> that <too. laughs> I need the reminder sometimes um, let's move on to the minutes I think we'll, we'll be okay even without Jerry being here um, anything on page one page two page three page four page five and page six the motion for approval I move to second approve. all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. Uh, Lori can you review yeah I there was nothing that was from actual residents there were lots of announcements of things from public agencies um, I don't know if anybody wants to call any attention to any of those, but uh. Brian, could you talk about there or or um, I saw that Jean was in here. Could somebody talk about the Time Warner Cable situation? Sure. Yeah. Are Are you going to talk about that with your manager's report? No. Okay. Go ahead. Um, well, the upshot is that uh, there's again sort of a re scrambling of the channels. So um, now uh, our community access is channel 5.10 something. So uh, uh, if you have the normal cable box, nothing really needs to change. But there was some technical thing about if you use a, uh, a, a GAM device that that makes a difference um, so I would guess if if somebody does have a problem probably the person to talk to is Paul Abendroth just give a call and uh, he has been able to figure those things out in the past um, but yeah but that the upshot is they're rearranging the channels but I think there were other changes too, not just to channel 5 but I guess people will figure that out oh there were a lot of other there was all the yeah I mean most of them are in Dayton though there's like a Dayton religion channel and an education channel okay. um, so I think the main one for us is is our community access okay well let's see I think we've um, I, I only got the hard copy I hadn't looked at, at the electronic copy and I was just wondering if someone could say something about the Family Violence Prevention Center candlelight vi vigil, I was wondering what. Um, yeah, it's just a postcard, and um, it is uh, just an invitation, and it is good to point it out. It's the Family Violence Prevention Center, which is in Xenia. It's a, uh, they have a hotline, and um, they uh, they serve Greene County, and they invite us to pause as they, we remember those who lost their lives to domestic violence and honor survivors who found the courage and hope to break free. Um, and the evening will include survivor stories, reflective music, a moment of silence, and the clothesline project, which I can explain oh. if you don't know about that. And they, that will be at six o'clock on October 6th in the Shawnee P Park Pavilion on South Park Street in Xenia. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Lori. Yeah. Well, I think we've wasted enough time. We'll just oh. <laughs> move forward and 
do the uh, the proclamation. I'm sure Jerry will miss being here. Would you all? I mean, I feel I was going to stand up here. Would we all like to stand? Okay. Sure. Shall I try to read this. <laughs> <laughs> So, guys, yes, going out here. I guess. Yeah, just come out here. So, okay, we've got to stand so you aren't all, your backs aren't yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. We need to get you all on camera. Yeah. Oh, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Whereas, the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility is a Class II facility serving a population of some 3,500 residents, and whereas the staff of the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility consists of Joe Bates, Superintend Superintendent Brad Alt, Operator 2, and Richard Stockton, Operator 1, and whereas the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility has maintained a perfect safety record for the last nine years, and whereas the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility has been recognized for this exemplary safety record by the Ohio Water Environment Association as the sole Ohio recipient of the prestigious George W. Burke Award for safety. Now, therefore, the Council of the Village of Yellow Springs wishes to recognize and congratulate the staff of the, Yellow Springs, of the Village of Yellow Springs Water Reclamation Facility by offering their appreciation for this attention to safety and duty by the declaration of this proclamation, read this 15th day of, December, of September 2014, and signed by all five council members. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Congratulations so much. And we have the, Patty, you should be out here too. And I think. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, good job. And I think you've seen, I don't know if you've seen this picture. We also had, uh, Brian, why don't you talk about that? Yeah, uh, local artist Kareem Bayrock Terralu uh, did a great uh, photo shoot of the wastewater treatment plant and came up with a lot of art shots. So this one's going to go, I think, in the office and got a couple others that uh, I guess you guys are going to take home signed by the artist, so I appreciate that. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks, Thanks guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for your work. Hey, all right. thanks for everything. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. See you around. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> um, is there anything um, that I did? We'll go to a, jam, a review of the agenda. I'm sorry, gosh, things are so <laughs> messed up, <laughs> disjointed. Um, there was one short thing I wanted to add to new business, and that was um, the, a joint trustee meeting, getting that scheduled council trustee meeting. Mm -hmm. So we're putting that under new business? Yeah. Uh, that sh wouldn't take long, won't take long, and I did. Um, I think Judy on your table is um, something I put together on that. Um, so we'll move to public hearings and legislation. First, we have Ordinance 2014-21, declaring one block of Hyde Road a no parking anytime zone. Now, <clears throat> I realize I I should have done this a little bit differently. You folks had tabled this, and then it was amended so but I did not change the ordinance number so the easiest way to do this is to untable it and then read it as amended and pass it as amended um, rather than assigning it a new number at this point so can I get a motion to untable ordinance 2014-21 I move to untable ordinance 2014-21 uh, second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. okay and it reads Whereas it has come to the attention of the Yellow Springs Police Department that there is a need to prohibit parking in the last block of Hyde Road, house numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495 nearest the covered bridge. Now, therefore, the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby ordains that. Section 1, the following section shall be amended to read. 
452.14M, prohibited parking areas. M, parking should be prohibited in the last block of Hyde Road at house numbers 1029, 1490, and 1495. Section 2, this ordinance shall be in effect and full force at the earliest date provided <coughs> by law. Thank you. Can I get a motion, please? Thanks. So moved. Did we get a second? <laughs> <laughs> well, we untabled oh. it. So... I guess so. Yes, second. Sorry, uh, that was what I was yeah. pondering. <laughs> right. Because we had already untabled well, you do it. Have, so it is two separate uh, motions because you're moving now to approve it. Oh, as okay. Amended. Just move previously right. to take it off the table. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do we have a second? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I'm second. sorry. Okay. I got it. Okay, um, so um, we did have this at the last meeting. There were actually two um, areas that were designated. It was decided to remove the Quarry Street section for a little bit more um, research, but you can see, and I'll turn this over to Patty in a second, you can see the packet does contain uh, not only a map, but a, uh, a description of the situation. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we've got much more information than we had the first time. And I think that it's, it is pretty apparent with the, the clearance of the bridge. Lori actually um, kind of saw this ahead of time um, when she saw the covered bridge going up that there were likely going to be some visibility issues. And I think that we have, I hope we have some signage there. Do we have some cautionary? Jason is here tonight for a couple of reasons, and he can explain what we're going to do with the signage. Okay, there good. is not currently any signage down there that I'm aware of. Yes. Um, currently, there's no signage. Um, what Chief and I had um, witnessed was the visibility issue uh, coming across the bridge, um, cars coming out of Quarry Street, uh, the visibility, plus people are parking there. You get down on the bike path now. So we're eliminating that as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, the reason why we eliminated the first 50 feet on to Quarry Street is to promote that visibility of the cars coming up to the stop sign, being able to give them enough um, uh, width for that. And cars coming out, so they're Cars not. coming out, yes. And this will not turn into a, a billion signs out there. Uh, what it will do is basically there are signs, as pointed out in the diagram, that say no parking from here to corner. No parking from here to corner. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at maybe seven signs instead of one. Mm -hmm. Have you? Has anybody <coughs> made contact with um, Bob Geyer to to talk about the visibility issues? And do they have any signage solutions from the other side when it's where it's not village property? No. Uh, what he said was to me, and uh, Luke Truby also said this was is that it's in the village. It's a village issue, whatever we want to put up as far as signage and everything. They can't mandate, they can't suggest what we put up, but they have not looked as far as on the other side, would be the east side. Okay, okay. I do know they do, I think they are going to put um, signs on the bridge itself that says Yellow Springs, coming up saying Yellow Springs a mile or two miles and then going to Xenia. So that'll mm -hmm. be good for us, but that doesn't have anything to do with this, mm -hmm. this um, visibility issue. Um, so, so people who want to park on this end of town can can park on Corey Street, correct? They can park on Corey Street. It'll just be 50 feet shy of that stop sign coming up to right. that road. So they just need to realize that if they're wanting to get down to the bike path, they need to park. Yes. It's a very wide street. There's plenty of room for exactly. people to park on exactly. either side of the street. I think street. it's one of our widest streets. It's, I think 34 feet, so there's yeah. plenty of room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Patty, did you have any other comments? No. Okay. Um, any other comments um, from this is a this is an ordinance so we will have two readings this is would just be considered the first reading tonight yes. so all of the second reading at the next meeting any other comments or questions from uh, council does that mean yeah we'll wait 30 days to put the signage up um, after the second reading um, then it's 30 days after that passage date that it becomes effective Right. So we could put it, we, technically we could put it up, but it wouldn't be enforceable until the 30 days. It okay. might not be a bad so idea to just be, go yeah. ahead and put it up. It and would give people the warning that they're not going to be able to park there and, and give yeah. folks time to I get used to the idea. If we're, if we're legally allowed to do that, that's probably a good idea, that it can't be enforced. Um, if police want to give people warnings, I yeah. suppose they can we'll say. We'll just have to make verbal the, warnings. I mean, yeah. not nothing record. Right. We'll just have yeah. to make the police department aware that technically it's not enforceable for 30 mm -hmm. days. Um, citizens, comments or questions from citizens? 
Tchau. This is a question on um, visibility, helping the visibility problem. Um, I'm wondering if we shouldn't be putting some kind of a mirror up. Is it some one of these things where if you're coming out and you want to see if there's an oncoming car, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, a I know. On one side, so that you could see oncoming traffic. If we're worried about a visibility issue, and you're saying it's not enforceable, that means for 30 days. For 30 it's days, enforceable. Okay, so after you get the ordinance in, it's going to be a forcible parking violation. Yes, after, after 30, 30 days. days. After 30 days, yeah. I understand that. Okay, so um, do we have enough police uh, presence to be patrolling this? Is this? It's part of the village and we patrol it now. It's just that we can't enforce parking issues there because there's no ordinance against them. I mean, it's not, it, we're not adding a, a part to the village. It's just an issue that's come up that needs to be taken care of. It, it's like any other traffic it, or parking situation. It's somebody either calls and files a complaint and an officer will come or an officer will drive by and see it. That's, that's how that's things how it's happen going now. To be enforced eventually. Well, I, yeah, I don't see any other way. I mean, yeah. they're either going to see it or somebody's going to call them. But it seems to me like, a, you know, if you're coming out of the, of the bridge that it might be a good idea if there really is a visibility problem to get mirrors up so that you can see oncoming traffic if that is a visibility issue yeah. that's just yeah. a, usually a mirrors work for corners it's not really so much a corner issue it's just it's you know narrow and um, it's a one-lane bridge going out into a two-lane thing right yeah so if people Can I say Sure. Yes. No, you have yeah. to come up to the microphone and state Sorry. your name. Sorry. It's, uh, it's annoying. But That's all right. <laughs> um, and do I need to state who yes. I am? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm Zoe Van Etenmeister, and um, I used to live down near that covered bridge. And uh, for everyone who lives down there, it's pretty common knowledge that uh, the road that goes down to the Vale. I think it's actually out of police jurisdiction. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, that's my husband's a, a police officer. It's a private, it's a <laughs> private There's road. There's no s actual speed limit on that road, and people fly like 55 miles an hour. So I think um, what Joan is saying is um, very astute. If somebody's flying on that road that goes down to the Vale, and they're just, they're not going to be turning onto the bridge, but they're going 55 miles an hour and going straight there, and you're coming through the bridge to get onto that road that I believe it's called the still cool, high. isn't it? It's it's high. I think high. it's still called it's high. high. Yeah. Yes. yeah, so so it doesn't have any speed limit signs and it's not enforced. <coughs> and if someone's coming at fifty five miles an hour and you're trying to come through the bridge either turning left or right, which you have to do one or the other, and they're flying, you could be hurt, I think. And then you've got people walking too. That's unfortunately that's so. totally outside of the village jurisdiction okay. um, the, the road that goes to the Vale is a private road mm -hmm. they can I just since it's private I think the the residents there could decide to put up speed limit signs etc but, but what about Hyde and what about Hyde, 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 is, Hyde is township on that side, right. on that side. I, I, I mean the speed limit might be 55 there I don't know what do you do do we I, know what that I speed limit is Jason is it 55 yeah, it's kind of crazy. It's but insane, and and just listening to Joan, I thought that is kind of an accident. That's the to that's the corner, and uh, yeah. but like I said, that's really outside. If you want to deal with that, and it's a great idea, you, you, the township trustees are your are the people. Yeah, to I think talk it is to. a good idea. This okay. could be something to add no, to. We know the, the township trustees. Yeah. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. So, uh, any other comments? Uh, oh, go ahead. Well, I noticed that Chief Pettiford suggested painting the car, the curb, painting, yeah. which I think is a good idea. Right, yeah. Assume that will be part of it. Yeah. yeah, it's the recommendations are all part of the ordinance. Oh, okay. Where there's curb, where there is curb, yeah. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> there's not a lot of curb out there. There's okay. a little, but not a super lot. Uh, so we have a motion, uh, and it's been seconded. Judy, would you please call the roll? 
Um, yeah, and I'm not sure whether I can call you, Jerry. Since you don't call me, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I won't call you I'll, late for dinner I'll just either. Sit <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, Asplund. Yes. Housh. Yes. McQueen. Yes. Wintrow. Yes. Thank you. Um, moving on to resolution 2014-49, accepting amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing the necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. This resolution is uh, government speak at its finest, so I will simply read the title, uh, which Karen just did. And just <laughs> Actually, it, there you go. Um, and it does set the amount at $735,000. Yeah, for the levy, and I'll let Patty take it from there. Uh, this is a pro forma passage of the the ra uh, rates and amounts that is um, given to us by the Budget Commission, the the County Auditor Budget Commission. Um, it's we need to pass it as part of our tax budget um, acceptance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did we have a motion? Um, no, we didn't. We don't have a motion yet. We don't have a motion yet. Can I get a motion? A motion. So moved. Second. Okay. Um, yeah, this is just a pro forma, and you can see we've got um, the levy, which is the um, outside millage, brings in 708.4 mills, brings in $735,000. We have inside millage of 2.3 mills, that brings in 220,000, and then another 27,000 comes um, inside millage for the police pension. Can you tell, say what the distinction is between inside and outside? Probably not. Um, <laughs> inside is what we're allowed to do, I think, without a, without going to the, to the voters. And, and that's been that inside millage, and that's one of the reasons we did go to the voters 10 years ago, is that the inside millage had been maxed. Our inside millage had been maxed um, long and many, many years ago. So, so what about the outside millage? That has to be passed by the voters. Mm -hmm. that's and we our, did pass it? That's well, our it's levy. levy. It's, it's our tax levy. It's it's tax levy. levy. You passed levy. it twice. Yeah. Okay, and then the other thing I had, which was something Lori commented on. <laughs> oh, good. Can, can we amend the misters? Well, I do that when I turn it in, obviously. I would like them to, they obviously, somebody went to the effort to change 19 <coughs> as in like 1999, uh, the day, you know, the blank day of to 20 why they didn't change the misters it's kind of irritating to me that they still send this out yeah as if everyone on a council is a mister um, so I would actually like to know is this do you know the I was trying to figure out who the author of the form is it says form supervised by the state auditor so I assume that means that it comes from the, the Green County auditor and is supervised by the state, but I'm not sure like, if I were to complain to somebody, which I am planning to. I would uh, probably I, call David Graham. Yeah, yeah. I would start David with Graham. the county. Yeah. Okay. And I would, I would absolutely, I would actually say, why is it just don't have anything there? Right. Or, or just I mean, put well, an M. Or I just mean, put M yeah. or something, but right. don't put Mister. So are you going to follow? Yeah, up on I'll that? do that. <laughs> I will Come let on. you do that <laughs> <laughs> happily. <laughs> It's a little thing, but sometimes the little things are what really get under your skin. Oh, no, I... I, I Comments from citizens? Questions? Any other questions from council? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I was just going to note that oh, sorry. everyone in the audience except Jason is female, so I don't think they're going to really <laughs> argue with it. So. And our camera person. Oh, well, and our camera person. <laughs> <laughs> He's working. He's not on the end. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jason is working too, poor thing. Uh, next up on the agenda, or next piece of legislation, is Resolution 2014 50, approving an RFQ for legal services. Okay, whereas the Village of Yellow Springs currently contracts for legal services, and whereas Section 206.01 of the Codified Ordinance of Yellow Springs, Ohio, requires that contracting for services in excess of $15,000 in value must be a part of a competitive bidding process outlined in Section 206.01, <clears throat> and whereas the cost of said legal services exceeded $15,000 in 2014, now therefore the Council for the Village of Yellow Springs, Ohio, hereby resolves that. Section 1, the Village Manager is authorized to 
to solicit request for qualifications for provision of legal services for the village of Yellow Springs. Section 2, this resolution shall become effective immediately upon its adoption. Thank you. Can I get a motion? So Second. Okay. Um, we always have an annual contract for um, our village solicitor that provides legal services. Um, in the nine years that I've been on council, um, we have actually never um, gone out um, beyond. We've always simply renewed our contract with, with Coolidge Wall. We have never sought um, additional um, RFQs, additional, uh, even sought, you know, to, to look at, at other firms. Um, I mean, their prices have changed. <coughs> Typically, their fees have increased every year. Um, but we just decided it was time um, to um, nine years, probably 10 years, was certainly long enough to be with um, uh, one solicitor. And we're, we're just interested in, in uh, exploring other options and exploring um, the world of municipal law. <laughs> so uh, we, have a, um, we have a proposed RFQ. Patty and uh, Brian, I think, both worked on that. Um, so. Um, one of them could. Um, I'll let Brian take okay. this one. Well, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, I thought was great is Patty had already found um, a template that fit a lot of what we needed. So we just kind of looked at what were sort of the key issues we wanted to make sure uh, a firm or attorney would be aware of. So we made some edits there. Um, otherwise, I really like that we have the cover sheet that just talks a little bit about the community that you're working with and understanding that uh, you know diversity and, and some of those other elements are so important to us. Um, so I, I think it's a great document and, uh, and I concur with Karen that it, it is important for us to you know sort of see what our options are and come back with the best services. So um, any other um, any questions or any comments about the um, proposal or about the RFQ? Any council members? Mm -hmm. I would just, when just the formatting, pull, yeah, fix the formatting. Something off in there. I actually yeah. meant to say the same thing. So yes, nothing big, but just there's just a big gap state, under yeah. five oh, God, that yeah. doesn't need to be there. And where and how are we um, advertising? Um, we will do uh, our normal um, Yellow Springs news. We'll, we'll publish on our website. Um, we will probably send it to the Ohio Bar Association. Um, I'm not sure if there are any other um, um, professional groups, Brian. Um, yeah, I was trying to think about, so what about like is there a municipal law right. group? It's, it seems like OML, even yeah. OML. OML. I'm assuming OML. these guys are yeah. all. Uh, yeah, OML, um, and we could even do the Dayton Daily News um, to get a broader range if, um, if that's what we choose to do. I mean, I hadn't, hadn't really decided on the Dayton Daily News yet. Um, I mean, we might even be getting people from Columbus, too, so I don't know yeah. that I necessarily yeah. limit to the Dayton Daily News. Yeah. Are there any clerks associations, or could you yeah. maybe do a little research on that. I mean, mm -hmm. I yeah. would say the wider um, the better, yeah. right? And and it, I think all of these are except the, for the news, um, unless Diane decides to change her mind about how she runs her business, will be paid <laughs> or will be free. No, I'm just kidding. No, everything else is free. So I mean, if we're doing web, I mean, most of it's probably going to be electronic, so we right. won't have to pay for any of it. Um, and what about the AG's office? I mean. Is it possible to? No, I don't. I've never seen any kind of a okay. listing on their website for that kind of thing. Okay. Um, I think the OML and the Ohio Bar Association are probably the most um, visible of those. Okay. But there's there's no like sub organization like an Ohio Municipal um, Attorneys League or something. Not that like I'm that aware sort. of. Okay. I'll check. Because uh, I was just thinking about, you know, for some of the Sunshine Law workshops we've gone to, the one that we went to, I mean, there were excellent speakers. So yeah. there's got to be some kind of Yeah, the AG puts or, those on. And, I mean, there are, there are some firms that actively participate in those kind of things mm -hmm. um, over and over again. Um, but um, I, so think, I think we'll be able to I think between the three of you then, widely, we yeah. can, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and I, you know, I, I guess if there needs to be a second tier, depending upon the, um, depending upon what kind of responses, um, then, you know, in some respects, I hate to limit it to the Dayton Daily News, um, but that's certainly the closest. It's within a 30-mile radius as opposed to a 60-mile radius. Um, uh, okay, I guess we can. Um, all those in favor of um, this legislation to uh, solicit for legal services signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. okay. Uh, next on the agenda is citizens' concerns, and that's for anything that isn't already on the agenda and if you will come up uh, we limit your comments to three minutes and uh, you need to come up and state your name anything okay seeing and hearing none i'll bring it back to council table um, old business the first item of old business is a review of the street musician agreement um, i will turn that over to brian Hausch. Uh, so for the last two public art commission meetings we have uh, reviewed the pilot policy that we looked at um, uh, we haven't really had uh, much more feedback from the last time I reported on this one of the recommendation or suggestions was to extend the period to two hours the public art commission felt that that we should not extend that so that was one uh, thing that they suggested not changing I, I would tend to agree with that as well um, what I tried to do although I didn't cut it very nicely but I tried to think about what this could look like on a card um, I had initially wondered if we could get it into quarter sheets but the only way we do that is if we uh, you know get basically summarized it um, but, but can't I, you do a front and back? It seems like you could do a front and back. That's true. That the bullets could be on the back and the rest of it could be on the front. That's a good idea. Um, and, and so card stock, and then it, I think that would just be much easier to handle. <coughs> yeah. So um, yeah. Yeah, so, it would all fit. Yeah. <laughs> Works pretty well. It's a slightly smaller <laughs> so, font. And this was kind of a last minute. Just I thought I'd right. see what it would look like. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I like that idea front and back. Um, and then I think we have said that we would, uh, all our officers would have a copy of this and we would provide them for downtown businesses so they can have to lead as well. Um, so I, I think we've done a really complete job through the commission and through the citizens that did participate to vet this. I think it's, uh, from what I've heard, it's been working the few times that there's been a call. I honestly haven't heard about a lot of calls, Patty. I don't know. I haven't either. Not lately. I mean, there was one that, that I came and spoke to, uh, a drummer about, and uh, one situation where we weren't able to get an officer there right away, but the drummer did stop after an hour. Um, so uh, so I would say that we should move win. forward with this, yeah. The amount of downtown busking has diminished greatly yes, the weather's gotten colder well I think it's mm -hmm. potentially because of the agreement but that's it's for whatever reason it's fine I mean it's a lot of our regulars have not been have not been performing although I have seen some new folks so I mean things change thank you yep. yeah yeah thanks so um, okay so that was just a report um, and council was in support um, next is an update on the community policing forum again I will turn that over to Brian that is um, being being uh, coordinated by the HRC that's right yeah so we uh, met last Thursday and uh, had a great meeting with uh, the chief was there and Patty and both sergeants as well um, we came up with quite a few topics that could potentially be discussed but uh, one of our experts in the room Fred Bardenstein uh, who's done quite a few of these uh, actually specifically uh, forums related to uh, police citizen interactions um, recommended that we limit it to 90 minutes I think that's a good idea uh, this doesn't have to be the one and only forum and I think everybody's open to a continuing uh, process depending on th how things go um, some of the recommendations that have come up is that similar to the village manager search we put out boxes again to gather it, uh, questions from our residents 
Uh, certainly, we can take questions through Judy at the clerk email or by contacting any council members. Uh, so we want to you know, keep that information flowing. And uh, we have set a date for October 23rd. That's a Thursday. Uh, so we were suggesting 7 to 8.30. And of course, it would happen here at the Bryan Center. And uh, that would then mean that uh, the deadline to get any questions prior to that, we determined uh, October 17th would give us enough time to process all that. One of the things that the chief said he would do, which I thought was great, is since an hour and a half, we want to maximize the time for questions to be asked by attendees, that he could put together a report that answers a lot of those questions ahead of time. So you know, we could have that at the forum. Um, and again, if we close off accepting questions by the 17th, he'll have time to put that together. Uh, the so only then the forum would be like follow-up questions effectively? Yeah, follow-up questions and then just more of a, a chance for attendees to, um, you know, get, uh, elaborate on certain issues. Uh, we thought that we would probably pick four <laughs> topics to, you know, start with sort of an introduction. Um, some of those topics, Patty, do you want to mention a few that? Uh, there was SWAT and the Drug Task Force, I know, were two of them. Um, uh, community policing. Community policing. Community right. policing was and we one. talked about how uh, maybe the YS News might want to uh, talk a little bit about what that means to kind of get people thinking about uh, how we tailor that to Yellow Springs. Right. Um, but we realized, I mean, in total, there were eight or nine topics that right. could have been discussed. We thought that by gathering the community input, that would also help us narrow that down. Right. Forfeiture, so, general right. communication issues. Right. We talked about budget, maybe, maybe not. I mean, so, you know, I, I think the key is sort of getting those priorities. The uh, HRC is planning a special meeting on September 27th to do a, and that's a Saturday, by the way. Uh, but to do the final planning. Um, and we have three uh, facilitators that have come forward, Jalen Rowe, Aaron Sari, and I already mentioned Fred Bartenstein. Uh, so I think that's a great group to guide this, um, a lot of experience. And uh, yeah, I think everyone came away feeling really good about uh, the everyone being interested in making this forum uh, uh, meaningful and doing it again, if that makes sense. Okay. What time is that meeting? Uh, 1 p.m. And that will be? On September 27th. You yes, mean? right. And, um, and if we could publicly announce that in, uh, in the arts room, we okay. thought. Will do. Any questions or comments from council members? Citizens, questions or comments? Any other comments from HRC members? Okay, great. So, I mean, do we need do we need to do anything to well, move forward got, with we those? We actually have we have two more meetings. So, just why don't you just maybe okay. do an update, another update at the next meeting? Um, I'm thinking that you may have the boxes out. Maybe not. Maybe we thought that we could put them out on the 29th after we had that meeting on the 27th because that that gives over three weeks mm -hmm. so are you um, three weeks. are we satisfied I guess I was a little unclear on the actual topics are you you said SWAT task force community policing and one other item but then I thought you also said that after you get the questions that that might change is that what you're saying that yeah. if there's a preponderance of questions on another topic right like for example training is it was one that was proposed um, so we thought we'd have uh, and I think we could even put it on the boxes here some potential topics um, and uh, yeah we thought that we would kind of see what the consensus was that people wanted to talk about okay so um, what if people don't have questions but they have concerns for example the drug task force or the SWAT I, I mean those are two things that there are certainly people mm -hmm. who would like to see us not be involved in those two things so but I, I mean I think I think that the forum I think forum first of all should should give an opportunity to explain 
the rationale, what those, what the drug task force is, what our participation is, and so so maybe an introduction of five minutes or so right. about it, and then then certainly an opportunity for questions. I mean, I think that's what the purpose of it is. And I think that was the format that was discussed. Right. Was that, you know, if you have four topics in an hour, the first five minutes are for a brief explanation of that topic, and then the other ten minutes are for questions and concerns from the floor on that topic. I mean, when I so if people have concerns, if people have questions or concerns, they right. could certainly write it on a card. Yeah, we'll and put it in, and and it can be uh, transferred into some kind of a question. Like, here is a concern from a villager. How would you respond to this villager? Sure. Right. That could be turned into. So uh, the, the villager wouldn't necessarily have to try to figure out how to make it into a question and to state their concern, and um, then and then the the committee could say how how do you respond to this villager's concern right right and, and I think that at the end of the day probably HRC is going to take all of those cards and prepare a report of some kind for council yeah and that would address someone that had a concern and, and wanted to make a statement as opposed to an actual question mm -hmm. definitely yeah and that was I think that was one thing that was nice also about the village manager search is we compiled everything that we got mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I think we should do that nice again document. Yeah. yeah that was helpful we'll have to bring Bettina Solis back yeah. <laughs> well, she did well, that <clears throat> I mean I, I think I would like to see this be a two-way street sort of thing information flowing from the police department and information flowing from the community to the police department mm -hmm. and out of that flowing some things hopefully some things will change some things will happen I mean that's why we're doing it because we want some kind of changes right. to happen right <clears throat> yeah and I think uh, to you know sort of emphasize that uh, Fred was really cognizant of that sort of need in this format and that's why I was really happy that he's willing to moderate yes because uh, he's done it in Dayton he's done it in uh, several other states in New York so um, that's invaluable that's great yeah, okay. yeah. Um, and yeah. I don't believe there were any other comments from citizens um, so we'll you'll give an update at the next, at yes. the next council meeting yes okay. Uh, we'll have met on the 27th so we'll have all the details uh, next item on the agenda is the Charter Review Committee qualifications and uh, we <coughs> talked briefly about it at the previous meeting about the um, the need um, to look at our charter it's been at least uh, I think we decided it been eight years mm -hmm. since we had done a charter review and at that point it was um, suggested um, by John Chambers because there were a number of provisions in our charter that were um, ran um, against state law so he said that there were things that we had to fix we put a commission together um, that then really goes through the commission will go through the whole charter see if there are things you know certainly we'll have legal counsel review it and tell us if there are any any parts of it that are against state law um, then we will have this commission go through that will consist of two council members, um, at least five people, um, and the, I, the village manager, and what other staff would it be? The, the clerk, the clerk, and um, see if there are other provisions that we have in our in our charter that are um, cumbersome, unnecessary. Um, not um, kind of not in keeping with the direction we're going I think we discovered when we did the referendum when the referendum issue came up that some of the language and how we required that to be done was pretty cumbersome and we can change that so uh, this Commission will look at um, at basically the Charter from beginning to end and um, make recommendations um, and again those it is it is legal it is the law so it will be in co consultation with the solicitor and um, those all come to council will deliberate on those as much as we need to but the goal is to have them um, have everything completed and ready um, by probably the sometime in the first week of August of 2015 
these have to be voted on so we would want we would want to get them on the ballot for the November election so we can it will be the council this council um, that proposed the charter amendments will be um, responsible for seeing that they get passed or don't get passed but we won't it won't be we won't have to revisit it with a potentially new council um, so um, Judy and, and Patty I think both provided some information um, an application um, basically the, f the first page will be what goes the Why we're looking to update our <laughs> yes. Hello, hello. Is it one, two, three? Yeah, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who knows? Thank but thank you. <laughs> so the the first sheet basically is will be the ad that goes in the paper. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So the ad that goes in the paper, just describing a little bit about what what it is. Um, what the commission, the makeup of the commission, and then asking for information. So we're asking people to um, uh, submit um, an application, a letter of interest, and a resume. Um, on the on the f second sheet is um, the application that asks for name, address, um, all that kind of detail. And then there are a few questions um, that we're asking just to. Um, <laughs> Oh well, uh, we're okay. You, it's all you come. Okay, not, yes, just yeah, hang there. <laughs> yeah, we're like, just to get a feel. I mean, I'm I'm somewhat wondering because because these questions um, are really almost like a resume, and I'm al almost wondering if I I would or, say or like a letter of interest. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I mean it's, what it's I a lot to ask. What I thought is it, ha asking for the application because it is you know basically narrative um, a resume and then if someone wants to elaborate they can optionally also include a letter of interest but I mean I, I think the application and resume would cover it so, so you're saying take off the letter of interest I don't think we should require it yeah I um, think yeah I mean, I think well I think what we should do is I hate filling out forms like this where I have to either print. I, I mean, I am a computer person. I right. think this would irritate me. So I think it would be nice if it was more computer friendly. You could put all four of those questions and say, answer these questions on this sheet or in an attached Letter. I mean, I assume that, the, that this would be electronically fillable, that we could do it in a way that would be electronically. It's not set up to be that way. Right. It looks, and it says, please print. Well, we yeah. have. And using. You can do that with so. Adobe. Can you set it up? I, I can help you set it up. I could. Yeah, I've not done it before, but I can't be. Okay. Overly yeah, different. fillable document. I mean, the other thing we do for HRC is we, it's an Excel. And so, you know, there are boxes and people can type into them. I mean, that's real simple. Um, but of course, a fillable PDF is nice. I'm not, I'm not too thrilled with the second question um, the about are there specific concerns you have about issues in the Village of Yellow Springs that should be addressed by the Village Charter? I don't think that's what this commission should be about. The commission should be people that understand the law and that are interested in working on updating it, not somebody that has personal issues that they want to bring to the commission. That they can do that at the at the council meetings, or they can attend the charter review commissions if they mm -hmm. have particular issues that they want to be considered. But I don't think that should be part of the commission itself. This application, did did you find it, Judy, or? Mm -hmm. Um, is there a rationale for that question? Well, frankly, I saw it as a weeding out. That's what I thought, too, was yeah. that if you do have some strong feeling. Simply because that's not the purpose of charter review. Right. I mean, I, I saw that as a way to sort of uh, identify if folks were really having a, a specific axe to grind versus 
Mm -hmm. Understanding what it, what charter review is all about. So no, I don't think that it needs to be there as long as the. I, and I think why are you interested in serving on the charter review commission takes care of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yep. I think just get rid of. I, the simpler we make it, the better. That's my main concern. Is yeah. it should feel like pretty straightforward. And so <coughs> if we can make it three questions instead of four. Well, how about if. Um, I'm just sitting here kind of writing something. Uh, what if we say um, submit a letter of interest and a resume, take out the application, and then say letter of interest should include the reason for your interest, your qualifications, and your willingness to meet on a regular basis? I agree. I, I think, I, yeah. I agree. I mean, that way you just don't even do the application. I agree. Mm -hmm. I think so. Right. People have to include all the basic information on this. Well, and, oh. and actually that last, that last piece, that question number four, should probably be integrated um, or into, the, into the advertisement, actually. Because well, and that's where she, Patty's suggesting it, so that, that makes... Well, but she's, I thought she was suggesting that it be part of their response letter. Well, it should be, but if you tell them they have to include it in the response letter, it's going to be okay. in there. Yeah, I think it. it I, I think, think we want it. Yeah. Want it in the letter. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'm much more comfortable with that. I don't like. You can just take out. I the don't like filling out forms. Yeah. 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 I mean, and obviously, you know, it, I, and I think it does say they obviously have to give us all of their contact information yeah. so we can get back in touch with them. So. Um, Anybody who doesn't give us contact information <laughs> <laughs> probably doesn't. Uh, we'll just see him at the Emporium. <laughs> Any other comments or questions, Jerry? Does this look no. good to you? No. Sit it, Marion. Citizens, comments or questions? Okay. Um, so um, I think Patty and, and Judy have heard our comments, and um, you can get this in the papers as okay. quickly as possible. Will do. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is a skate park update, and I see that Mr. Hamby is here, and uh, he and Brian and the Public Arts <coughs> Commission have been uh, talking about the skate park, so I'll turn it over to Brian. Yeah, I, I might, uh, uh, I'll just kind of give sort of an overview about the, uh, what's been going on with the Public Art Commission. So uh, we've been looking at it for a while. Um, and, you know, I think where we're at now is we want to get an uh, engineering diagram so that we can get an RFP out and um, ideally get something done before the end of the year. Uh, now, there were a couple things in our packet that I think uh, are really helpful. I believe Jason and the chief and Patty sat down and kind of looked at our space out there overall just to think about what's going to be happening, the Verizon Tower going in. Uh, you know our plan to upgrade the skate park uh, the plan to put in safety town which the chief had talked about uh, at an earlier meeting which is about uh, a small village to teach kids about safety mostly targeting kindergartners so uh, what we're looking at right now is taking part of the existing tennis tennis courts to do that and the other part to do a smaller uh, version of a skate park for younger kids uh, so it's safer so they can practice up and if you look at that diagram it's nicely positioned by the existing playground which we're planning to upgrade as well basketball courts would stay where they are uh, so that's kind of a, a look at the area uh, the Public Art Commission likes that I like it I think it's a great plan for integrating the things we want to do now uh, the other diagram that was in our packet was a, uh, a concept that was put together by one of our local skaters based on information that he'd been gathering from the community. Um, so what we're hoping to do now is, uh, again, get an engineering firm or one of these skate companies to do uh, a design uh, as inexpensively as possible or free if that's even possible so that we can then put together the RFP um, Jason do you want to add anything okay um, Patty um, I did get an email back from choice one engineering today um, they have the name of um, a, a gentleman out in California who, who did some basic drawings for a local park 
Um, and so they're trying to hook me up with him. And I'm also waiting for uh, Christine to get back with me about Rick Campitelli. Right, and she did re reply to my email, so she's she's working on it. So we've got definitely things going on. Uh, we, you know, in the ideal world, it would have been great to be ready for to approve an RFP at this meeting. But uh, I think our hope is that by our next meeting, that we can have that together, uh, and then if it looks good, be able to put that out and um, still pour some concrete uh, by this year. Can you say more about the Safety Town thing? Yeah, so Safety Town is, uh, uh, they do it in many municipalities and police departments essentially build uh, streets, have little cars and things and are on, at a miniature sort of fun way teaching kindergartners, sometimes preschoolers, about safety issues, so how to cross the street, how to deal with traffic. Um, it, sometimes it's used to teach bicycle safety, yep. um, mm -hmm. all that kind of thing. And um, I think actually this was the end of last year. Uh, Chief Pettiford had talked about that this was one of the things that he wanted to bring to Yellow Springs. And we have talked a lot about the lack of use of the tennis courts. The basketball mm -hmm. courts get some use. Mm -hmm. uh, Definitely they But do. the tennis courts, I've, I've seen one. Rarely. Yeah, one time that I've been here in three years, people playing. So uh, we thought it'd be great to carve out that space. And then since it's already fenced in, we can move some of the smaller equipment for younger kids who are a bit intimidated uh, at the main skate park mm -hmm. uh, and that would be easier for parents to watch their kids when they're at the playground um, and w there's been a lot of support for that uh, I guess some other things that might be good to uh, mention are that we're looking at the uh, security camera issue so that with the Verizon tower out there we can minimize the vandalism that tends to happen because the skate park is so far back um, that's also why uh, we're looking at, you know, how can we see out there more clearly. And removing the tree. Yeah. Um, yeah, what tends to happen is late at night, there are a lot of broken bottles and things that we see the next day. Uh, and I, I don't think it's the skaters out there, um, but it would be good to be able to have better lighting, better uh, visual over that area. So exciting, okay. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we've got uh, something coming together that's going to look really great. So now we've just got to get the nuts and bolts. Okay, thank you. Um, moving on to new business, and I can't believe how far ahead of schedule we are. I love it. Um, <laughs> proposal for artistic trash can options. Um, I think Patty may have did I think we may have talked about this at a previous meeting yeah. about the liners that we need for the trash we did it was in my report the um, existing yeah. manager's right, the, report the existing trash cans um, that were added to Xenia Avenue and Dayton Street um, a couple of years ago um, <coughs> the metal bottoms are starting to rust out and they're also not easy to empty um, uh, Rumkey isn't very happy with us, so we've got a, we've got an option. We have to add liners. Um, that's one of the options we have, and unfortunately, adding liners to how many cans? Um, Thirty-six. Thirty-six cans is. 60 liners. Yeah, we we were ordering some sixty extra. liners is thirteen thousand dollars just for the liners for the trash can. So that kind of got people thinking. So do we really, if we can spend, if we have that much money, if we're going to have to spend that much money, is there a better way for us to spend that money um, and get a better product? So that's uh, where that started. And uh, um, again, we took advantage of our Public Arts Commission, and uh, they um, spoke about it at their last meeting and had received a, uh, a proposal from um, artists Katie Seidel and Beth Holyoke um, to reprive their um, ceramic trash can. So I'll turn it over to Brian to. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I think uh, most of us should be familiar with the mosaic trash can that went in. Uh, it's been about a year and a half in front of Current Cuisine, and uh, actually it was two years ago that Beth and Katie put together a proposal trying to see would could businesses fund more of these trash cans. Uh, you know. 
was there possible funding through grants and whatnot and suddenly when we realized spending 13,000 on liners versus maybe doing something cool that would uh, enhance the downtown and uh, also take advantage of uh, their work as well as something really sturdy. So uh, what their proposal is, is to take the old aggregate trash cans that we have, um, which is what they did with the, the Possum Mosaic one, um, make those really sturdy with the process of doing all the clay and everything. And we have 27, I believe, that are still usable. Um, a few of them didn't hold up so well, but in general, they're really sturdy, uh, easy to empty and that sort of thing with a few adjustments. And uh, their idea is to pair a mosaic one with just a straight up recycling one. And they would still do some uh, kind of cementing ceramic thing with it, but it wouldn't be uh, tiled and it would be clearly marked that it's recycling and then we kind of alternate those downtown um the public art commission uh recommended and we talked about it extensively because you know the the cost issue even though uh, that's really council's focus was something that i think everybody's sensitive to and how do we balance this but uh katie and beth think they can do three sets in about two months so the recommendation that we finally got a majority vote on was to try that out. Uh, try three sets, see how they look interspersed on Xenia Avenue, and then go from there. Now, one thing we did learn, I think, last time at our last meeting was that the current trash cans can be used in the parks because those are ones we empty ourselves, so we can just put plastic bags in those and not go through the expense of the liners. But Rumpke, who empties the trash cans on our main streets, will not empty it's too trash much bags. Time. Right. So I think, Patty, did I? You've covered it. Okay. So, so what was the thought about paying for the three sets? Because that's not listed here. Yeah, that's in the in their proposal. They mentioned that about every two months they could do three sets. So that would be in you know, a three mosaic with three recycling cans um, and so since you know we thought in the next couple months we could see what those look like install them downtown and then you know decide from there is this something that we want to do more of uh, but I don't think we have to invest in the full 27 but at, it, the, at the same time um, I thought the decision was also to go ahead and put out right the rest of them just not decorated right um, because of the problem that we're having mm -hmm. is that exactly so that was the second issue is that uh as a short-term fix uh we do need to do something about the rusted out cans uh so jason had recommended that we put out the rest of the aggregate cans uh in the interim and then roll things over and see how things look mm -hmm. um and the other piece of it is is new lids um, right. because the the lid the the one that's on um, the cans that we've had are open they get wet inside and then it's hard for them to empty so they're looking um, staff is looking for something that's either has the the total cover the total dome cover or, or at least a rain guard on the top to keep the rain off um, so those would be ordered also mm -hmm. So, so is council being asked to approve the idea of taking uh, and paying for the first three sets and then evaluating it? Is that? Yeah, I think there are two things we have to approve um, that, and then also, you know, this uh, short-term solution of putting the aggregate cans out there to replace the rusted out ones. I'm, I'm very for it. Yeah. I mean, I'm not real. Uh, I hate the aggregate cans when the, the aggregate but it's you know it's better Jason said they're better cans they're much <laughs> more sturdy um, they are just you know they're better in that location so um, getting those back out making it easier to empty and I would are we at the same time will you get all of the lids is that something that you will we'll probably go ahead and order all of the lids at once it doesn't make sense have not they to. found a lid that fits these cans mm -hmm. It's yeah, uh, thank you. I believe Patty was looking into that, and I, and I think that she has uh, some good ideas. Uh, but okay. again, 
all we have to do is order 27 because that's how, how many aggregate trash cans we have up there currently. Right, right. And keep in mind um, what Brian didn't point in is that the, the metal trash cans that are on Dayton Street will stay there. Um, we'll just take the liners out of the ones, the good liners that, out of the ones on Xenia Avenue and recycle those mm -hmm. uh, to keep one. Mm -hmm. So oh, those okay. will stay there. Only the aggregates are going on Xenia Avenue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So is it just that the Dayton Street ones haven't rusted out yet? We have enough to make some of the Dayton Street are rusted and, and a lot more of the Xenia Avenue are right, rusted. because they get Well, used. Jason's crew will switch them out so that the ones on Dayton Street have two good sides. Right. And then the, the rest of them will replace over to uh, Xenia with the aggregate and we'll take the ones that are rusted out, repair them enough that we can put bags in them. Mm -hmm. and use them in the parks and maybe some at Mills Lawn if we have extra, you know, okay. that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I just, I feel like uh, this, the decision to replace all of those cans was made rather hastily by the village and um, we didn't, I think uh, it wasn't a good process and I want to apologize to the village that we got these cans and they turned out to be such a big problem so quickly that's not good use of public funds right I agree I would well and a good reason to have a public art commission yeah so <clears throat> and I would I, what I think we should also do is is not for the first three sets but as we move forward I think we should go um, look to <clears throat> to and look for some foundation money um, potentially looking for look for some matching money to bring the cost um, right. down a little bit more because by the time we buy the lids um, they will be a little bit more expensive but I think they're going to be much more functional because I because the the um, the recycling will be much more apparent and um, now nobody knows even though they're recycling it's labels on top clear. people they were are not being so they were I, a mistake all around <laughs> right yes right. so and one thing that uh, Beth and Katie do mention in their uh, proposal is that they can put you know sort of plates on there so uh, we we could consider uh, business sponsors and, and other kinds of you know memorials well. um, you know so and I think we should look out for that uh, one thing that was mentioned is how would that affect placement because we've got to kind of balance the two. <coughs> Maybe a trash can can't go in front of the business that wants, you know, to sponsor it. But I think we should be open to that um, and look at, you know, how we can bring down the cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, so council is, um, let's somebody make a motion to purchase three, three okay, sets. I, I move that um, we uh, agree to purchase uh, three sets as outlined in this proposal by uh, Ms. Seidel and um, Holyoke and that we also bring back is this proposal the also old, the, old. the old ones uh, for Xenia Avenue and utilize what can be used of the present ones on Dayton Street okay is there a second second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. thank you um, and then I added um, a joint council trustee meeting. It was mentioned by Marianne at the last meeting that one of the items that she would like added to our future agenda items is the CETA, the Joint Economic Development Agreement that we have with the township for the Center for Business and Education site. Um, the, and as it so happens, we do have a fifth Monday in September, September 29th. I happened to get an email from Chris Mutcher, um, township trustee. Um, I did send an email, Judy sent an email out to council to see about availability. I don't know that we heard from you because you weren't in town. Um, Lori, unfortunately, isn't available, so we may want to um, look at a different schedule. But in addition, down in that second paragraph I have a list of the the fourth and fifth Mondays um, through 2015 taking out the ones that are right around the holidays um, the ones in December so um, if we if we don't want to do September 29th um, 
maybe. And, and then I also include, and we've talked about the CETA, um, we just, the covered bridge just came up. There are a number of other items, Glen Forest Cemetery, um, that um, there is actually some property there that they are interested in, um, in having use of at the cemetery. Mm. Um, we know, and, and council has, has written a supportive letter about the new firehouse. It would be good to get an update on that. Um, those, I think, are the, are the most important things. I think shared services also would be a good thing to talk mm -hmm. about. We, I, I assume that staff, the staff does work with the township um, staff as much as they can, but it would be good to get an update on that. Um, and the Tecumseh Land Trust, you know, with priorities related to um, uh, to easements and, and easement preservation, how they are um, addressing it um, would be good too. Those those are the ones um, that I, that kind of rose to the top. That'll take about two weeks to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, we've got plenty. Hmm. So, are you looking for a date? Right. I mean, if, if we can't do September 29th, um, I, mean, I think I'm the only. If I I might well, be. Well, I one. I may be having a medical procedure, and I don't know when that's going to be, but. It probably would be then. Okay. Yeah. So let's then let's leave that. Let's um, October twenty seventh. October twenty seventh would would appeal to me. I mean, I I would like to get it done. I mean, it's been so. It's been. We were talking about this back in twenty twelve and didn't do it then. Um, so if we could maybe target the twenty seventh of October. How does everybody? Okay. It looks okay for me. I guess I better look at mine. And then will this need a, uh, an okay from Township Trustees as well? Or yeah, well, and I, I asked Chris to, to get them to approve tonight. I didn't, I didn't say anything about another meeting, but um, I will let him know um, that, we're, that we're looking at October 27th. So I will talk to Chris about that. And then we can have a little bit more input into an agenda. Um, at, at our next meeting. Uh, let's see, um, manager's report. Uh, we've already covered the first item, which was the trash cans along Xenia and Dayton. Um, we are uh, still looking for the final piece for the uh, beaver flow through device. Um, I actually got a lead possibly on it today for Jason. And I know that Mary Ann potentially has uh, uh, an idea and is going to get with uh, Jason on that. I know Jason would really like to finish <laughs> and, and have it done. Um, so and the beavers would too. Yeah. I think everybody would be very happy. Um, so we are working on that. Um, we did issue the RFP for Sutton Farm, but during the pre-bid meeting, um, a couple of the contractors asked for schematics. We are having the schematics drawn, um, but we're going to go ahead and open the uh, bid submittals on Monday as planned um, because we, we think that everybody has a good enough understanding of the, of the project that um, it's, it's okay to go ahead and do that. Um, Jason, you concur with that? Yes. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open that. Uh, if we do not find what we think we need or anything that is appropriate, we can always reissue it. Um, we always have the right to reject all bids. Um, so we're just going to proceed at this point and hope it doesn't put us any further behind. Um, we did schedule or uh, we did evaluate the submissions for the uh, water plant consultant on Friday. We had a, a, a committee of six people. Um, it included um, Karen, Jerry, myself, Joe Bates, Johnny Burns, and Scott Straley from Ohio RCAP, which is the Rural Communities Assistance Program. Uh, we evaluated the six submissions and chose the rank them according to um, the criteria that we had set forth. Um, we are going to invite back the top three for presentations to council, and those three firms are HNTB, Burgess and Nipple, and Hazen and Sawyer. Um, and Hazen and Sawyer slash LJB. Slash LJB. Um, those were the three top uh, ranking firms out of the six that were submitted, that submitted uh, proposals. 
Um, I will make them all aware of that. What we need to do is schedule a night for these folks to come and make a presentation to council. Um, and I also need for council to let me know any specific questions that you want addressed about their qualifications to do this or their process for doing this during their 15 minute presentation. Each, each one of them is going to have 15 minutes presentation and 15 minute question and answer afterward for council and the public. Um, so, well, council, I mm -hmm. think we decided, uh, and not maybe not the public. Um, but but I, it'll be a public meeting, so the correct. public can be there. And I mean, it, we're usually pretty flexible, but I think that if there was some burning question, um, we could probably deal with it. Right. And so, um, yeah, I wouldn't. I think we have to have public has to be allowed to ask questions if they have them. So if council would submit any questions that you want answered during the presentation, I, for instance, some of the things that the committee came up with was that we wanted the personnel who would be actively involved in the project to be present at that presentation. We want to put, mm -hmm. yes. you know, eye, uh, mm -hmm. eyes on the people who are going to be doing it. So um, if council could, um, we might as well pick a date while we're, yeah, <laughs> while we're I mean, scheduling yeah. extra. So could you tell me the names of those organizations first? HNTB, it's four initials, and it's the four principles, and I never can get the names. All right. Uh, Burgess and Nipal. And Hazen That's and Sawyer. That's at Nipal. N-I-P-L-E. Okay. And uh, Hazen and Sawyer slash. L-J-B. L-J-B. Okay, yeah, I um, And then, um, the other thing, it, did you say, so will they they be, I assume, submitting to us a packet of materials, each of them? They will, ahead of time, and each of you will get that. We, we, they submitted an RFQ <coughs> packet for yes. this evaluation. Now they're going to submit an RFP, yes. which includes, we're going to do this, 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 and this for this amount of money. Right. And then they'll make that presentation to council. Um, and at that point, then council will make a determination on to which one of those three becomes our um, consultant to go through the process of the design part of design bill. Okay. So we need to find a date um, that we can do that so that so I can all let them three know. at the same night. All three mm -hmm. the same night, just at different times. Okay. Um, so this will not be at a regular meeting, but a special no. meeting. No. Okay. And I'm thinking starting at October, six. Guessing. If we, yeah, if we can start at six. Well, so which we may dates wanna, are we doing? We're already doing budget things in October, yeah. right? But with regular meetings at regular as part meetings. of the regular right. meeting. Yes. So we may want. We may actually. I had forgotten completely about this. So we may want to reschedule the township trustee. Yeah, it's going to be an awful wanna, lot. We're having early meetings. Yeah. And. We could actually schedule the uh, presentation for mm -hmm. October 27th. Why don't we do that? At 6 o'clock, if you want to do that, and then just figure out a different date for the... Well, we don't, and the next, so we're going to be in, for the township trustees, we're going to be into 2015 because I don't think anybody's going to want to do November 24th. That just seems a little too close to Thanksgiving. So we're probably looking, I'll tentatively say January 26th. So October 27th will be, and I will schedule one at 6, one at 6.30, and one at 7. October 27th. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, Why are we starting at 6, though? Um, Karen had just requested. I, if we can, I mean, if, we, if you don't want to, um, we don't have to. That's fine. 6 is okay? Yeah. I'm the one who usually has the biggest problem with it, but no, it's okay. It'll be okay. I mean, most of these folks are probably driving at least an hour mm -hmm. or more, mm -hmm. coming from okay. Cincinnati and Columbus primarily. Um, I know two of them are from Cincinnati, yes, and one from Columbus. Um, the information there on the book three utility accounts was just an FYI for council in case you got any questions. For they hit one key. <laughs> wrong during the input downstairs in the utility office and it printed all of the book three bills with a zero balance which would have been a really nice gift for everyone but um, 
Yeah, they had to go back in and correct that and reprint that. Um, but um, if someone was late paying their bills because of that, they did not get charged a late fee. Um, project update. Um, we have a lot going on, and um, Karen had actually asked me to prepare a uh, kind of a visual representation for you. I did not get a chance to do that, but I did include in here uh, an update on all of the projects that are going on. Um, Mills Lawn Sidewalks will begin um, hopefully next week is what we were hoping for. Um, Jason, is that still the latter part of next week? Yep. Okay. Gaunt Park ball fields will not be until uh, late October. Streetscape will not start till after Street Fair um, because he is still working over on Limestone Street and Cemetery Street and we didn't want to put him way behind. Uh, Sutton Farm is pending, the water plant consultant is pending, and the legal services RFQ is pending. Um, we have, you will see attached the information on the um, 2015 international truck. It was put into the budget this year um, to make the initial payment on the truck and then four additional payments after that. In the meantime, the state bid price for this truck has gone up. Um, and so Jason looked into some of the financing and what we would like to do is to go ahead and order the truck and, and when I say order the truck, that truck's not going to come in for four to six months. Yeah, basically, basically six months um, because that truck will uh, be a cabin chassis and then it'll have to go to a, another party to get the bed, hydraulics, um, spreader, plow. plow, everything else. So um, what, what we propose to do instead of financing this truck for five years, they also have a seven year lease program that we can pay off in six years and I know that gets really confusing, um, but it does save uh, quite a bit in interest if we do that. And the difference in price and what needs to be approved by council tonight is $14,125 over what was initially approved in this year's budget for this truck. Now that $14,000 would be spread out over the five years or six years that we're going to take to pay this off. Okay. I, I've got a question. So I, I went to a very interesting meeting with the Greene County Township Association. Bob Geyer is all up in arms about salt. I mean, there's going to be a huge problem with salt this year. Yes. There isn't enough. The cost has doubled. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what he said he is doing, and what they did last year, is they're combining half road salt and half grit and beet heat. Mm -hmm. yes. do, you, do we have the ability to use the beet juice? We don't have an applicator for that. Um, what um, council has approved is us to um, have the V-Box spreaders, which has the containment on the side, which would add that beet juice as the salt is being spread or being put down. That's the only way that we can apply it as of right now because we, we simply don't have the equipment to put it out. So, but, but can it, I mean, I guess that's my question, if we're ordering a new truck, if the salt situation is going to, plus environmentally, now I haven't heard any environmental input on the beet juice. I can't imagine that it's a problem. But environmentally, I'd rather be putting beet juice on the ground than salt. Yes. So, you know, it may be something we want to, to go to. Well, keep in mind, though, the beet juice and the beet heat, uh, quote unquote, is more of a, a pre-treatment. Right. Um, and that is just to prevent the uh, compacted uh, snow from icing up on your roads. That's that's basically all it is. But what about the grit? Because they're mixing it in with grit, so then that gives you more traction. Grit we cannot use because we have catch basins. If it gets down in our in our sanitary or in our storm, it's going to cause okay. a blockage. So if we run 100% grit now, if we if we trim it down to meet that recipe that Bob Geyer has sent over, it might work but we'll have to do a couple applications to where we're actually out there visualizing how much is going into our gutters, how much is going into our sanitary. Okay. And, and mm -hmm. the, be the beet juice, I want to say, is you'll see a lot of times if you're driving around and it's supposed to snow that night, you'll see these little lines mm -hmm. on the road. That's beet mm -hmm. juice. They go through and they put it down before anything happens. Right. So. Yep. So, okay. uh, so it sounds like you've looked into it. It sounds like you've 
Right. So our new truck will will it be any better f for in terms of alternatives? Yes. Basically, everything that this truck will have on it um, will have the stainless steel bed, stainless steel spreader. Um, this truck will give us more life than the previous ones because we haven't had that ability. We haven't put a stainless steel bed on there. Mm -hmm. uh, most of it's road salt. It's eaten up from underneath. I would like to get this truck in, have it z barded underneath, and keep that <coughs> well so, I mean, it would give us more useful life. Mm -hmm. um, also, we'll have that V-Box spreader to where we could put that beet heat on there and mix it with our salt or the calcium chloride, which the state does all the time and just, it works a lot better in sub-zero temperatures. Okay. Okay. Great. And, and are you, do we have, do we have salt? We do have salt. Our salt, our salt blend is currently full. Okay. So we have roughly about 180 tons. Uh, Bob said that we could get more at the price of what he charged us last year. However, when all that goes, he's going to have to charge us double. And apparently Beaver Creek has excess. I think Beaver Creek and maybe Xenia yeah. both have excess. Yeah, okay. I've, I've talked to uh, John um, over at Beaver Creek about maybe purchasing some if our supplies run low. I've also taken Patty's advice and, and called Morton Salt. We are on their list. They could possibly bring us some. Mm -hmm. Okay. But um, and the plan is, the long-term plan, Jason, not to interrupt you, is to make ourselves a direct customer of Morton Salt. Um, it's a lot more economical, and you also, if you run out of salt, you contract for a certain amount of salt, but you don't have to take delivery all at the same time. Hmm. And so you can, you can take what you can hold, which is 180 tons for us. If you start running low, you can call and say, give me my next delivery, and they'll bring it up, and it's all included in the per ton price. Yeah. Okay. So we're not wasting our man hours or our machine hours going down there to get it and bring it back. And it does it does save money. Yes. So so what do you need from us? I assume we're going to have to have legislation to increase that price or not. To well, you're it's under the under fifteen thousand. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I think it's just a verbal as long yeah. as it's under fifteen thousand. Okay. Yeah, then verbally approve the difference in the price. Okay. Yes. That's fine. Yeah. I do we have a motion? So move. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, the last thing I have is um, I got a notice um, last week, um, Friday actually. Um, DPNL has officially filed with the state to terminate the contracts of certain villages oh. at the end of the year. Right. Um, also, AMP on our behalf, um, the, on behalf of the group of folks in this area whose contracts are being terminated is filing a protest um, with the state uh, saying that our current prices should continue until the new uh, negotiated price can be uh, reasonable a price can be approved and so um, I will keep you posted as that progresses but I really don't have any more to report on that right now is there anything so so far amp doesn't need anything from us any no. kind of um, resolution or no i already gave them um our approval to uh participate in filing the protest on our behalf um amp will be picking up the charges for the consultant to file those protests as part of our membership and so we'll be moving forward okay thank you um clerk's report Business as usual. It was so, my camera report was so brief that I decided not to waste the paper. So, <laughs> online, but it was pretty pretty much business as usual. Thanks, Judy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe not quite so much for you, but <laughs> that's another matter. Um, standing reports. Uh, Lori. Oh, I don't think I've got any. Uh, your planning commission is hoping to meet, um, I think. Monday, yeah, the 22nd. Monday. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. That's I okay. I was just thinking. All of a sudden, yeah. It's, and it's not on my calendar, so that needs to change. But yes, so we are going to be meeting um, because we have a couple of items, but we haven't met before, so I don't really have anything more the to 15th. report. Today's the 15th. Today's the 15th. Today's the 15th. Oh, so it's next Monday, the 22nd. No, Planning Commission's meeting October 15th. You're not meeting Oh, we're not meeting until October. Yeah. Okay. okay, we couldn't get it to work out. That's right. Oh, that's We right. tried to make it work and we didn't. No wonder it's not on my <laughs> <laughs> calendar. I was actually thinking, so that's it. Okay. Jerry? Uh, mediation, nothing. <clears throat> 
community resources. We didn't have a quorum at the last meeting, so uh, it is kind of discussed uh, what they might do for the uh, <coughs> referendum referendum vote. Um, and uh, all of the uh, um, the council members and the uh, trustees uh, decided that we would not participate in any meetings that they would have as it related to the uh, referendum. All right. Mm -hmm. And let's see, library, they're happy that we're moving forward with the uh, new roof. <laughs> Brian, anything uh, in yeah, addition? I mean, it, it seemed like I would have covered it all, right? <laughs> but uh, I did want to mention a uh, Human Relations Commission, two uh, important updates. One is yellowspringshelp.org, which is the online resource guide that we've been working on is live uh, we actually have a training manual now that was put together on how to use it and um, we're gonna have a very busy Miller fellow uh, getting that populated so that's really exciting and the second thing is I just wanted to mention um, and actually both of these are initiatives that were largely driven by Linda Radalski um, we have the mental health first aid which is the outcropping of the original vision with the Harmony Rain Barrel that created seed money to get this to happen. And the uh, response has been amazing. We uh, wanted to limit it to 20 people. The first one's going to be on October 3rd, and it's a full day training. Actually, Karen's going to be there. And um, it's basically about, you know, folks that, you know, interact with uh, people that have mental health issues or other issues emotional issues uh, get some on the ground training on how to respond to that um, so we are now overbooked and so we will be continuing to do this but it's been great you know the police department uh, a lot of the organizations downtown a lot of people have been coming forward the churches uh, and are excited about this so I think it's cool um, Community access panel, we actually have a uh, nomination, and I think everybody's got this at the table. Um, Tim Barhorst uh, has applied to uh, join community access panel. <clears throat> and uh, I had mentioned that we had one of our members, uh, we have five plus the liaison, <coughs> uh, one of our members has resigned so we were looking to fill a spot and the great thing about Tim is that he's been part of the Springs Net group which is working on the municipal broadband that we agreed last month uh, community access panel would take on uh, on behalf of council uh, the other thing is we did go through the uh, new process of having two interviews so I interviewed Tim and so did Jerry and um, I don't know, Jerry, if you have any comments or... Um, no, I was impressed with his qualifications and uh, had a chat with him and uh, I think he would be a good fit for the uh, camp. Yeah, and the other thing we specifically asked is uh, any chance of a conflict of interest uh, based on, you know, if we did move forward with this. and. Clearly, that's not something that Tim's working on. He has that knowledge, but uh, he's he's actually his own consultant, so that is not an issue. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I would like to nominate Tim Bar Barhorse to fill our uh, fifth spot on the cap. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And, uh, yeah, we covered everything uh, on the Public Art Commission side, so... Marianne? Okay, the Energy Board uh, <coughs> did not meet. Actually, the last two meetings has, eh, it has not met. And um, <clears throat> in terms of the Environmental Commission, we've had a couple people submit applications, and there's some other people who I've had some conversations with that I plan on talking with this week. But <coughs> we don't have a, enough people yet to interview people. Okay. Can I ask a question? I looked at the, uh, the, um, announcement in the YS News for mm -hmm. this and it mentions the Environmental Commission meeting on the second and fourth Thursday. Oh really? Is that is that the plan? 
No. You can have whatever plan you want. I okay. Mean, right? I think that well, might it, be it the, when be. the old okay. environmental. Okay. Because I was thinking if we are going to run that again, maybe we should take that out just, just because yeah. two meetings a month may look. Right. Yeah. yeah I agree. Uh, it always felt excessive. <coughs> um, there. I'll, I'll talk with there you was about a that. difficulty yeah, maybe getting that changed because no date had been chosen or anything so you might want to just just you can either say it'll meet once a month to be arranged or yeah something, something like more, that I think right yeah that's what I would do one, once a month to be determined it'll be determined by the members of the Commission right so anyway so I, I just uh, not that that was a good for catch. That. Yeah. good catch uh, me the chamber i mentioned the meeting that we have this thursday at uh, at noon down in a and b about social media there will be social media experts there to talk about how to use facebook and um, twitter and other um, social media to market your business um, and mvrpc the packet included the minutes from our last meeting things have been pretty quiet although um, everybody is happy that there was like a temporary extension of the uh, um, trust fund for highway trust fund so there at least is some money to spend um, yeah. so um, then you we Judy's added on future agenda items Judy's added all of the uh, the budget hearings and noted that those meetings are all starting at six o'clock um, and hopefully at the next meeting we do you know I guess we won't have an mm -hmm. RF we won't have an RFP for a while then we need to add let's add for October 27th is the special meeting um, for the um, water. Water, water plant yeah. consultants and you do have the um, ordinance coming back all right um, right the signage or, or the no parking ordinance mm -hmm. You need an update from HRC on the public forum. Yes. Okay. And anything else that uh, that comes up in the meantime? Um, next, I will entertain a motion. Uh, to for the purpose of to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of the employment of a public official and um, there may be um, excuse me Jason sure yeah sorry um, sorry I didn't bring this up when Patty was talking about it, but projects um, the sanitary is completed on uh, East Limestone mm -hmm. and probably about 85 percent of the storm is completed they're running into some shallow bedrock that they're having to uh, jackhammer out of there so. Um, that project should be completed here pretty soon. Um, they're, they're really doing a great job. So um, they just have to come up to the motel um, and then into uh, the library uh, alleyway and they should be done. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so a motion uh, to go into executive session for the purpose of discussion of the employment of a public official and we may have um, information to report when we do come out of executive session. Okay, but we are not going to. We have no idea how long that will be. I move that um, we go into executive session with the purpose of discussion of employment of a public official. Second. Judy, would you please call the roll? Yes. Winter. Yes. Asplin. Yes. Sims. Yes. Ash. Yes. McQueen. Yes. And I should also say, with our attorney present. Thank, Thank you, Chris. Yes. Budget session. Budget session. Entering the mall. Yeah. If it's not there, uh, does anybody need to take a break? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, 